Resident Evil Vi Eilage. I thought was a, a significant step backwards from Biohazard. I think it's a decent average game, but Biohazard was a great game, or at least I thought it was. You know, it's been a few years. Maybe I'm memory holing Biohazard. Maybe it wasn't as good as I remember, but like there are so many things wrong with Village. It looks sharp, not impressive, especially since there's not really any real physics going on. It's apparently not capable of having a few bodies on the ground because enemies immediately turn to dust after you kill them. Frankly, as nice as it looks, I noticed zero improvement on 7, outside of the fact that it is a slightly bigger map. Oh, it does have ray tracing, doesn't it? I didn't notice at all. I mean, the lighting looks fine and all, but I mean, except when you're transitioning between light and dark areas, like, it, it mimics this human eye effect of, like, the windows were all bright, and then as you stepped outside, it went back. Like, like a little bit of that was fine, but like, look at this. Like, this is terrible. The game is pitch black everywhere in places, and the flashlight does a horrible job of turning on when it's supposed to. And anybody touting Resident Evil Village as survival horror is lying to you. This is not survival horror. This is an action game. This is a shooter with some jump scares, okay? Jump scares are not horror. Jump scares are not scary. Congratulations, you can startle me with a loud sound. I... Where would you like me to ship your metal? You've committed literal auditory assault on my ears. That's an actual crime. Village is a much bigger game in terms of acreage. I think Biohazard only had like one or two or three buildings. It was like one small piece of property. Village is a, is, it's like a small town. Your old rickety Victorian village. You have your, the best part is definitely the, the castle. Um, it's very spooky, the medieval castle. It's very gorgeous Victorian. And when you're in there, you'll find yourself praying to God for protection, but not because of the zombies, because of the sexual temptation of Lady D, Lady Damascus, Lady Demistiera, Lady Dynasty Warriors, Lady Triple Ds, Big Booty Booby Lady with boobies and tits. And while unfortunately she does not step on your face, she does suck on your fingers. No step on face, no step on neck. The other areas in the game are fine. The only one I really did not like was the robot factory at the end. What happened to the gritty, like grimy, dirty, violent, like robots aren't fun to kill. Like they, they barely even bleed. It feels really modern and industrial in what's otherwise this kind of neat little snapshot time capsule of olden days. So I want to talk about the difficulty. Now, the thing I've, what is that? Is that, a, is that a checkpoint? Is that a save point? So you can save your game. So you're telling me that when I die in Resident Evil Village, I don't have to start all over from the very beginning? What kind of casual ass, plebe ass, bitch ass, easy ass, trash ass game is this? So I pulled you guys on what you prefer to play your games on difficulty wise, and I got pretty much the results I expected. Now, on easy, the enemies just stand there. They slowly approach you, and if they're able to get to you and do damage, there's a lengthy quick time event where they grab you, lean in, bite your neck, and then they pull away, release you, and back up. And it's like, okay, so I, are they even trying to kill me? So easy is a damn joke, but medium and hardcore are literally impossible on consoles. The enemies literally dodge your bullets. This first werewolf you fight took eight headshots and did not go down. This game has such a drastic difficulty disparity between medium and easy. Medium is hard as hell, and on easy, it's basically impossible to lose. And on hard, beside making the enemies faster and more aggressive, which I do appreciate, everybody just gets a giant health bar. Everybody becomes bullet sponge, and now I'm losing using immersion. All right, one shotgun blast to the face or chest should always one-shot everybody. People tend to play on hard because they like the increased challenge and because they want to actually have to use the mechanics of the game. If all you're gonna do is just artificially inflate everybody's health numbers, then there's not really any point in playing on hard anyway. And of course, when your health gets low and you're at critically injured, you you can't run. You're slow as hell, which just gets you killed. Like, like seriously, how am I supposed to escape when I'm already on the down and out, when I can't even move? Screw this game's difficulty. Screw this get good culture. How about you just balance your games better? How about you just design your game around it being a fun, enjoyable challenge instead of an artificial brick wall headbutt? I played Village on little baby bitch girl mode, okay? And I'm not self-conscious about that at all. I don't feel the need to defend that decision. I didn't even have to bring this up! And the problem you get when your difficulty is this botched is it completely and utterly ruins the immersion. It was clearly supposed to be this atmospheric, tight, first-person shooter. And it's not like they needed any help ruining the immersion. Ethan is retarded. This guy seems to have completely memory hold everything that happened in Resident Evil 7. I'm supposed to believe this is already an 
inexperienced video game hero. And this same guy is trying to go up and fight these giant, muscular, angry, violent, supernatural werewolves with a Swiss army knife. It's like, dude, why are you using a two inch blade when you're in a castle and there's literal broadswords everywhere the entire progression of the game is gated off by these locked doors and these you know having to get keys and oh combining the keys so they fit the next door it's like bro this is a shitty wooden gate you can just shoot the lock off with a shotgun or just climb over it are you serious it's the dark souls 2 immersion fallacy of where the player character would rather go and fight the four most powerful demons in existence than climb over a small pile of rocks it's like what is this shit with the tractor you could go around the tractor you could climb under the tractor without getting the jacket or you can just climb over the tractor. Dude, Capcom thinks you're stupid. Capcom put zero effort into making the player feel immersed at all. Crafting bullets makes zero sense. You cannot just create a bullet out of the raw materials. You need to refine the metal. You need to press it. You need to machine it. You need to activate the primer. It's a video game. I know. I get it. It's supposed to be fun. I'm supposed to shoot zombies. It's not supposed to be Citizen Kane, which I've never seen, but I imagine is extraordinarily over Rated. But if the amount of suspension of disbelief needed to invest in your game is astronomical, nobody's gonna do it. These developers are divorced from reality. And then Ethan's hand gets chopped off again. And it's like, bro, are you kidding me? All right, all right. Now, there is a lore reason for this. Capcom doesn't just not understand how hands work. Like, okay, there is, there is a story reason. Ethan was exposed to the mold, so he's he has super regenerative abilities. But that doesn't solve the problem, that just changes it. You've just told me I have superhuman Wolverine healing and can shrug off literal disbelief dismemberment. But a few Wolverine scratches are supposed to kill me, but a few bites on the neck are supposed to kill me. And that's why Resident Evil Village utterly fails at being horror. You have to feel vulnerable to be scared. You have to feel like your life is at risk. You have to feel at threat of loss. And if you're borderline invincible, you can't be scared. And apparently nobody at Capcom has ever fired a gun. Why in the bitch does the handgun shoot so damn slow? And it's just a generic handgun. This isn't a Beretta. This isn't a Glock. This isn't a USP. This isn't a 1911. There is a 1911 later. It's not this one. And the choice of weapon progression that the game gives you doesn't make any sense. They are so redundant. The game gives you four different handguns, three different shotguns, and a sniper rifle. The only time the sniper rifle makes sense is immediately after you get it. Otherwise, 99% of the encounters in this game are within 10 feet. So if you wanted to have four weapons, you know, one for each tick on the D-pad, or by the way, having to manually pull out the knife by hitting the D-pad and then hitting is terrible. Just map the knife to its own button. You literally can't move while you're taking out your knife. That doesn't make any sense. But you know, you know, four weapons, a handgun, a shotgun, submachine gun, and then like a battle rifle or a carbine of some kind. It doesn't have to be an M4, but you know, M14 lever action, something a little longer distance, something stronger. is good variety. They're all used in different situations and there's not a Whole lot of overlap. All right, that sounds like a pretty good balance, right? No, how about handgun, handgun, shotgun, shotgun, handgun, handgun? No, not the fully automatic machine pistol you think it is, because that is not, this is Capcom's idea of full auto. And again, I get it, it's supposed to be a claustrophobic survival horror game. Oh, you're not supposed to shoot bullets fast, you're supposed to reserve them. Okay, that's up to me. If I want to waste all my ammo on one guy, that's my prerogative. But again, half the enjoyment of a shooter is feeling like you're shooting guns, especially now with the super adaptive triggers and the much better vibration in the dual sense. Shooting guns should be better than ever, but when the weapons in the game do not function remotely like weapons in real life, you completely lose that. It is not fun to shoot a pistol once every three seconds. It is not fun to pump a shotgun and then have to wait an extra second before you can shoot it, despite the fact that nothing is happening to that gun. That shell is chambered and ready, but you can't pull the trigger. And the progression of the shotguns itself, it's like, okay, they all use the same ammo. This game is trying to tell me that a 12 gauge buckshot shell fired out of a different shotgun does way more damage not a little bit more because you know the rifling of the barrel or whatever no substantial like nearly double the damage output from just a different firearm platform okay that's not how it works and again don't look at me i'm not the one who decided to have three different shotguns and tell you they did three different levels of damage like this was so easy all you had to do was say one is buckshot one is birdshot one is slugs
you're done. And look at this, you're honestly trying to tell me that that box right there, with the size of those bullets already coming out, holds 60 rounds. There are 60 rounds in there. That's Harry Potter's Magic Mary Poppins bag. These pipe bombs are an utter joke, by the way. You literally drop them right at your own feet. It's a disaster. You can't throw them with any distance at all. You can't aim them through the boards of the window if you're trying to defend the house. And the game allows you to craft from scratch these advanced proximity mines and these tiny ass little diggy pipe bombs, but no Molotov cocktail. And that's one of the other pseudo interactive mechanics with the game is that there's a couple sections where you have some houses that you can get inside and you can block the door with like a shelf and then there's a hole in and then you can shoot the enemies through the, the shelf. So the game allows you to kind of fortify yourself and to kind of shore up a defense a little bit and create some uh, natural choke points. That's kind of neat. I would like to see it expand on that a little more. I, I mean, I, I by no means I want the full Call of Duty Zombies mode. Oh, I have to hammer away at the board up the windows and stuff, but this was a neat idea and I would have liked to seen a little more from it. And the other thing they did is in Resident Evil 7 you had to switch out to your knife and then slash a crate, which by the way, again, why are very small items and minor amounts of ammunition in giant ass crates taped up with yellow again such atmospheric much immersion but the game did give you a dedicated okay just press x to break the crate button and then you'll sometimes miss if you're because it just swings the knife so if you're looking up you miss and you have to do it again but there is still not a dedicated melee button it's like dude pick up a sword pick up a two by four pick up a crowbar do anything to put some distance between yourself and the enemies that 99 percent of the time can only hurt you if they touch you and this damn flashlight. Why am I holding the flashlight with my penis? There's no dedicated flashlight buttons. The game just pulls up the flashlight automatically when you're in a, a scripted super dark area. Sometimes, half the times, they just leave you standing there in pitch dark. Dude, circle is mapped to literally nothing. You couldn't put the flashlight on that button. And again, I would have liked to see any input or any interactive gameplay other than shooting. You know, how about maybe it's a resource you have to manage. Maybe you have to find batteries for the flashlight. It's kind of like Metro, you know, where you have the, uh, the canisters for your gas mask. This is not a survival game. There is nothing survival about Resident Evil Village. And the stupid Tetris game in the inventory doesn't count either. That's ridiculous. And this story is garbage. I, You know, I feel kind of bad for ragging on Red Dead 2 as much as I did because at least Red Dead 2 had some pretty darn good characters. The voice actor who plays Ethan is terrible. He seems mildly annoyed at the fact that his wife was just murdered in front of him. It's like, ugh. Now I gotta find a new one, now I gotta clean that up. And this entire scene at the beginning that's supposed to be all shocking makes zero sense after you know the ending. This this is literally dumb. And again, Resident Evil Village is a direct sequel to Biohazard. Like, it acknowledges the plot events and it uses the same characters, Ethan and Mia. And Ethan is completely memory hold any experience he had with dealing with the undead because he goes and berates this old man who is clearly terrified out of his mind, handing him a gun, asking him to help shore up the defenses, and he's just yelling at him and interrogating him. What's going on? What are you doing? You gotta talk to me, man! It's like, how about you take the fucking gun and pick a door? There's a character later in the game that offers Ethan a deal. And it's not its not even a deal, because it's not a trade. He, Ethan, Ethan does nothing in return. This character literally just offers to solve all of Ethan's problems at no cost to him. And Ethan says no, because he's a living brick. And that's why I'm left with my dick in my hand with this game. It's like, uh, how, how hard could it be to fuck up a, a Victorian zombie survival horror game? You know, the, the template for this game, having the super gritty first person shooter that's dark, that could rely on the flashlight, rely on the, the circle of light for your horror. I wish it would open up the game a little more, add a few more mechanics, give me some more resources to manage, and then let me just kind of go wild. But this game is very scripted, it's very cutscene heavy, it does very little to improve on what Biohazard 7 actually did pretty well. And for a $60 game, I was over and done with it in nine hours. It has its moments, but I would not recommend this to you except on a deep, deep sale. And we all know the only reason anybody's getting this is for giant, big, sexy vampire booby lady. And guys, I hate to break it to you, but there's a cheaper way to see boobs. Zombie, 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 zombie. Trust you for anything So you can keep your hands away